Workers Beat 972-647-1893 is the number here. Tomorrow will be a call-up party over at Communication Workers of America Hall 6215, that's Bonnie's Union, at 2 o'clock at 1408 North Washington. Tomorrow is a call-up party. Bring your cell phone. They already got 40 people to sign up. This is being sponsored by Move On. If you need more information, contact Deborah... Beltran, and her number is coming up, 325-054-3940. That's Deborah Beltrain of the Move On Group, and they're going to have their call in tomorrow. It is all about turnout. If you want your side to win in these elections, you're going to have to get people to turn out. All of the good intentions in the world don't mean a thing if you don't get people to actually get down and move out and do something. So, for some time now, we've been told that Americans have moved so far to the right that they want more wars and fewer workers' rights. Seeing candidate Romney adopting Obama's program wholesale in the last debates shows that it isn't true. The Los Angeles Times ran a headline called, quote, Romney endorses Obama, end quote. Romney may have been nominated by the anti-worker crazies, but he knows he cannot win with them. So, now we have... Two candidates running on the same program, <laughs> which just shows that, it's, that it was never true. Didn't you think so, Bonnie? It was never true that the right-wing, crazy, anti-worker people had taken over America. Never. Never. Never true. Um, uh, it, it, you know, it, it kind of, sometimes it looks like that because a no, lot of— because they get all the media. There you go. They get all the publicity. That's right. That's right. But you got to pay attention. That's why you have to tune in to something other than— uh, faux news. I'm sorry, that's Fox News. Uh, F A U X. Oh, I think your guest is here. I'm so excited. F A U X is faux. Faux, yes. Faux news. Faux news. All right. I know this that's guy. That's a good deal. Set that man up. <laughs> Kenneth Day just walked in. We're going to talk about that, uh, about the drivers and maintenance people for DART in just a minute. Early vote goes on until November the 2nd. Applications for vote by mail must be sent by October 29th at the latest. They have to be received by the elections uh, office of your county by October the 30th. Early voting through four days in the 15 largest counties stands at nearly 1.19 million voters, wow. or 13.73% of those registered. The weekend is a prime opportunity to take part in the early vote, which runs through next Friday, November the 2nd. This year's pace is still eclipsing the 2008 turnout. However, don't get too excited about that uh, because the makeup of the vote is also different. You can't just say uh, whatever happened in two, 2008 is going to happen even more so because you have a larger, one larger number. But the turnout so far has been good, and that's very, very critical. How about this for a counter trend? Our brothers and sisters in Michigan are campaigning for a constitutional amendment that would place a number of labor protections, including a ban on right-to-work laws in that state's constitution. Needless to say, the business community is apoplectic. Apoplectic <laughs> means that they don't like it, I think. I hope. <laughs> what do you think, Bonnie? <laughs> you know, right to work is right to work for less. And one state, I think it's Colorado, one state has a ballot initiative to legalize marijuana. So it's, it's not all right-wing, anti-worker no. stuff. And it has a good chance to, to pass, I believe, in Colorado. Let me tell you something about the CWA. They, the Communication workers ratified the Verizon contact on the East Coast. They ratified a four-year agreement covering about 35,000 workers from Virginia to New, or New England. But we still can't find out what's going on with the Verizon contract here in Texas. Do you have any idea, Bonnie? It's, uh, it's ugly. It's ugly. I uh, saw Jarrell Miller at our demonstration last Monday. Yeah. And uh, he was hoping uh, to get some news to us, so maybe they will call in. 
Maybe. I, I did not go into the office yesterday, so I didn't check my uh, my email. Um, so I have I don't know. I, I hope so. And Bonnie is a CWA member. Yes. AT&T, this is still talking about communication workers. Mm-hmm. AT&T has taken steps to further strengthen its defined benefit pension fund by contributing $9.5 billion equity state, stake. At $9.5 billion equity stake. Retirement security is a critical issue for working families, and AT&T's proposed action means a strong future for the fund. That's, it, thank God for that. You know, it was like, it was it was way short, and it's still short a little bit, but not anything like it was. And and we, we must say that CWA has fought very hard to hang on to those pension benefits uh, for not just current employees, but also future employees. Mm-hmm. And one more thing about the CWA. You know, the CWA organizes the Texas State Employees Union. Yes, sir. And that's local 6186 CWA. They sent an email blast to all members alerting them about early voting, reminding members that voting matters and determines, quote, how we want our state and nation to be run. Right. This decision has never been more important in our state after enduring one of the worst sessions in over 50 years. Last session, we witnessed the governor and the majority party cut and gut some of our most crucial public services. So they're urging everybody to get out and vote. Let's turn to our guest now, our special guest, Kenneth Day from the Amalgamated Transit Union, 1338. Good morning, Kenneth. Good morning. Good morning. So tell us about Vote Transit. What is what is this program that you're working on? Oh, uh, Vote Transit. Well, what we're doing is we just we want to let every every uh, listener out there know how important public transit is. Uh-huh. Public transit is um, um, easy traffic congestions on our roads, protecting jobs, clean energy um, across the country. Without federal funding, it has been very difficult to keep public transit rolling. Mm-hmm. Because it, because the Congress has got its scissors out and trying to cut everything, right? Absolutely, absolutely, it has been a very very difficult challenge in trying to get public transit funding bill passed through Congress. Okay, let's take this call from Curtis. Thanks for calling KNO Win, Curtis. Good morning, Curtis. Did he hang up already? Curtis, call us again, 972-647-1893. We did not intend to lose you, 972-647-1893. We're here with Bonnie Mathias and Kenneth Day, and Kenneth was just beginning to tell us about VoteTransit.org, the program, the Amalgamated Transit Union, but it's not just for union members, is it? Oh, absolutely not. It's also for our riding public. Without the uh, federal funding, uh, service has been cut, Jobs have been contracted out, and it has been a difficult, difficult challenge. So, uh, so riders, in other words, people who use public transportation, which is just about everybody, uses it one time or another. And do they realize, do people realize that they may be losing it? I, I think some do. Uh, they realize that service is being trimmed to cut back. Fares are increasing. In fact, uh, beginning in uh, December this year, we're going to have an increase in fares. So I think uh, there is some awareness to the public. I don't think there's enough. Mm-hmm. So what you're urging people to do is vote for candidates that support mass transit. That is very important. Mm-hmm. It's very important that we have candidates that support public transit. You had a rally. You had a rally just the other day. We did. We had a rally downtown uh, Dallas at the corner of Lamar and Pacific at the West End Transit Center. We were supported by um, one of our uh, one of the candidates supports uh, transit and. Also, uh, one of the Congresswoman, Congresswoman Eddie Bernice Johnson. Yeah, Congresswoman Eddie Bernice Johnson is actually on that committee, isn't she? Uh, yes, she is. She also used to chair the uh, Transportation Committee in D.C. Uh huh. She used to chair the committee when her party was in power, but but she doesn't chair it now. But she's still on it. Yes, yeah, she's still on it. Been a great supporter for public transit. Mm-hmm. And she came out to your rally and uh, on a cool day downtown. A cool rainy day, supported by uh, candidate uh, Mark Vesey. He also attended and supported the rally. Okay, Curtis is back on the line. Good morning, Curtis. Thanks for calling KNON. Good morning, gentlemen. How are you all doing this morning? Glad to hear from you. Good morning. Well, I'm glad to be heard from, and I hope that that you guys will not be as disrespectful as the last uh, host was. You know, it's all, you know, y'all say that y'all are the voice of the people, but yet, you know, if people are not saying what you want them to hear, you have a problem with other side of uh, point of view. And I'm going to continue to call because I'm, I've been a listener of KNON 
for years, and I do support the NON, and I do have a different view of voting than other people do. Uh oh, you mean you, so I think that my you don't want them to vote? You work, but we're urging people to vote. Important. Well, I think my 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 view is just as important uh -huh. as everyone else's view is. Okay, I'm and sure it is. I'm a black man in America, and I really have a problem with everybody always talking about voting for a different party. Uh, uh, this person is going to help, and you know, this, sir, that, uh, Curtis. Let me just stop you right there. We don't tell you who to vote for. We just want you to vote. That's the most important thing. Uh, your your voice. Or your vote is your voice. That is your choice. It is a personal choice. It, no one can tell you how to use it. The only thing we do on this program is to urge you to vote. Okay? When, Thank when you so you much for calling this morning. Good morning. Yes? No, is Curtis gone? <laughs> Am I, can I talk now? Yeah, go ahead. I didn't get a chance to get my view out. Oh, I mean, you what is your view, Curtis? What is it, Curtis? Come on. You said it was different, and, and Bonnie was making sure you understood that we were just trying to get people to vote. Go ahead. What's your vote? What's your view? Is okay. he still there? Curtis, we can't have any dead air, so either you got to talk or we got to go. Okay. All right. Well, getting back to Kenneth Day then. Thank so you. you're urging people to vote, are you not? Absolutely. We want folks to get out and vote. And, and, and not only is your, uh, your vote your voice, it's also your power. Uh-huh. And a lot of riders uh, should be doing this vote transit business. Do they save any money, people riding pro public transit? Uh, we think public transit will save you money. Uh, saving up to $820, uh, $820 a month, nearly $10,000 a year on tra uh, transportation. Mm -hmm. Did you ever live in New York? I never lived in New York. In New York, most people don't have a car. I know public. Most people don't have a driver's license. Oh, you mass, know, mass transit because they don't need it. Well That's supported right. in oh, New York. Oh, it's awesome. Uh -huh. awesome. People that do have a car are probably sorry because they can't find they can't park it. <laughs> That's right. They That's can't find park. a place to put it. And uh, you, when you get an apartment, you know, you might pay uh, thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars for an apartment, and they say, "Oh, did you want a parking place too?" Because that's uh, thousands and thousands that's extra. and thousands <laughs> extra. Well, yeah, make, because because they, they use mass transit and, and they're very happy with it. Appreciates mass transit. Those trains run all night long and people in New York running around all night long yep. and uh, and uh, all day long and taking it to work every morning and everything and they meet their friends there and they 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 have uh, musicians and everything at the subway stops mm -hmm. and and all kinds of lively activity going on. And uh, uh, they don't they don't live in car societies oh, no. like we do. No, there's no hesitation. They they, they right. appreciate it. They get out there. Don't think twice about mm -hmm. getting on mass transit and going where they need to go. And we need to adopt that same attitude right here in Dallas, because I I've, I love the train. It's awesome. I live three miles from the Green Line. Uh, I can be at Fair Park in. 10, 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. It's well, pretty awesome. Well, public transit here in the uh, Dallas Fort Worth area is really, really coming along. And it's expanding, too. It's, it is. Because uh, not very long ago, you couldn't take the train to Irving, for example. Right. You can now you can now catch the train, go to Irving. You could go to Pleasant Grove. And, you know, we, of course, we go to southern sector of Dallas. So we're really growing. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> unfortunately, you still can't take the train to Grand Prairie. No, no. Uh, Grand Prairie opted out to uh, join in with Dart. Yeah, they decided not to do it. Right. Kind of like Mesquite. And right. Mesquite yeah. did it. Uh, Mesquite too. Yeah. yeah, Mesquite did, but they just recently. Uh, didn't they? Uh, don't they have bus service? Yes, they just got it. Uh, just recently bought oh. into a park and ride service. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, that's good. So that's it's good. the coming thing. Those those little suburbs that that haven't bought into it are going to have to, uh, or get lost, get left behind. Right. They're looking for ways to get in right now, but. Uh, the the one percent sales tax is very difficult for some of these small cities to pay in order yes. to get into mass transit. Okay, well I got another caller on. Uh is it Les or Les and Mary? Les, Les Mary, okay, well come on. Uh good, good morning, morning. KNON. It's glad good morning, to hear from you. Good morning, how are you? Glad to hear from you. Glad to hear from you too. I've been listening to you just for the last few weeks and my only comment is that, uh, you know, last weekend there was a guy called in that started spewing racial epithets and you let him go, which was the wise thing to do. However, some of these people that call in with their rants, sometimes I think you should just let them rant because uh -huh. it only il illustrates the depth of their ignorance. Uh -huh. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, 
also illustrates the fact that there's far too many people in this country that watch nothing but Fox 4 and take it as the gospel right out of the Bible. Yes, that's um, true. I think if people Amen. are truly going to make an intelligent choice, they need to do their own research, do their own reading, and, and look in more than just conservative uh, issued uh, statements and so forth, mm -hmm. but really look back in the history of things. For example, when uh, John McCain ran, I considered him. I never voted Republican, but I considered him until sure. I started to research him. Good. And that was the end of that. So mm -hmm. um, I'm, hoping, uh, I'm hoping the president makes his way through. Uh, I'm also sick to death of listening to people talk about Obama, Obama. The name is President Obama. Thank you. As the Republicans pointed out to us in no, uh, in no uncertain terms just uh, very few years ago, when they felt like too many Democrats were referring to former President Bush as Bush. Mm -hmm. I, think the, I think that pendulum should swing both ways. I'd like to hear a little bit more um, respect for the office, if not for the man. Yeah. Thank I want to you. clear one thing up, Mary, about the guy who called last week. Uh, we the station's policy is that we don't allow racism. I mean, even if even if he called some other program besides the Workers' Beat, they wouldn't allow any racist language. Well, I'm, I'm on glad this to program. know that. Mm -hmm. I'm glad to know that. So, so Summer, the, who was running the board last week, he, you didn't actually hear everything he said <laughs> because there's a little 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 bit of a delay, which That's gives uh, which gives the producer time to uh <laughs> to <laughs> stand yeah. by you know and well, I tell you, the one word i heard was plenty i mean this uh -huh. is 2012 almost 2013 people get with it racism has no place in american society thank you well <clears throat> my own position on it is that it's divisive it you know divisive. what we need to do is come together and if there's any message at all that's consistently brought to us by every guest on the workers beat the, the, the message is that we need to come together. And uh, so people that deliberately try to divide us up and slice and dice us are, are working for the other side, even if they don't even realize it. Uh, the other side wants us all separated. They want the men fighting the women, the blacks fighting the whites, the Latinos mm -hmm. fighting the, the everybody else, and uh, uh, the gays fighting the straights. And... And that's that's a formula for us to lose. It's just straight fighting the gays, I think. Oh yeah, they're doing a fine job of that too. <laughs> yeah, yeah they and are, the, aren't they? And the documented workers against the undocumented workers. They just keep trying to divide us, How and uh, that's the way they keep wages down. That's right. Well, by the way, on something uh, not quite as uh, uh, connected, I guess I read a little article, very small little article in the Dallas Morning News yesterday about a DPS trooper that fired on a car full of illegal aliens yeah. mm. from, yeah. an, uh, from an a aircraft helicopter. because they would not stop. Yeah. And an I, understand, I understand that's DPS policy, but it seems to me to be a bit harsh yeah. to open yeah. fire Mary, if you want to stand by, people, stand by for just a minute because we're going to have to sure. take a break. Just okay. stay on. Okay. Be right back. <coughs> Joe got the axe this morning. He's been down, size down. I got two years on my mortgage. I got two kids still at school. Lou Lisa's annual Thanksgiving live broadcast will be happening on Thursday, November 22nd from 9 a.m. till noon, and you're invited. Join Lisa and special guests Reverend K.M. Williams, KNON's own Greg A. Smith and Jay Mack, and Jackie Donlow for the live broadcast and Thanksgiving breakfast from the Alligator Cafe. It's happening at the KNON Studios, located at 5353 Maple Avenue at Butler in Dallas, and seating is very limited, so get your tickets now at knon.org. Come join Lou Lisa, Reverend K.M. Williams, Greg A. Smith, J Mac and Jackie Don Loaf for this great Thanksgiving tradition on Thursday, November 22nd from 9 a.m. till noon for the live broadcast. This is a KNON benefit event. It's a brand new morning on KNON with an all new music format heard from 7 to 8 a.m. Check it out on your drive to work and get your day started with music. Monday morning features Ranger Rita and the Magic Time Warp playing music from 1947 to 1962. Tuesdays, it's Everybody's Folk with Ginny Peel at 7 a.m. and the Celtic Music Show at 8 a.m. with Brad Madison. Our all-new format, the KNON Blend, featuring music from all our KNON shows, is heard Wednesday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Wednesday has Pippin, 
Thursday, it's Dave Chaos and Bridget Kicks. And Fridays features Christian and Jennifer. More information is at KNON.org. Tune in to the all-new KNON Morning Blend every morning, Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. on KNON 89.3 FM in Dallas. KNON is the voice of the people, Dallas's most diverse radio station. Want to hear some great Texas blues? KNON has the CD for you. KNON's Texas Blues Radio Volume 5, our latest blues compilation CD to benefit community radio, sponsored by Forever Young Records. This CD features 15 tracks and 60 minutes of great original Dallas Fort Worth blues from Tutu Jones, Blues Boy Bo, Buddy Whittington, Andrea Dawson, Kirkland James, Sonny Colley, Johnny Red and the Roosters, the Chris Watson Band, the Two Tones, the Rough Cut Blues Band, Jeff Stone and Charlie Love, Dave Millsap, Sirloin and the Ash Kicking Machine, Michael J. and the Paul Bird Band, and J.J. and the Detonators. We're only selling 1,000 copies and it will never be reissued. Get your copy now at Forever Young Records in Grand Prairie, Record Town in Fort Worth, and in Dallas at Bill's Records and Rewind Music. The CD is available as an MP3 download at KNON.org. All proceeds benefit Community Radio, KNON. For more info on Texas Blues Radio Volume 5, visit us at KNON.org. Get your copy now and hear some real Texas blues. Your ears will thank you for it. Blue Monday. How I hate Blue Monday. But how I love that song. That's not a... The number here at KNON is 972-647-1893. I'm Gene Lance. I'm here with Bonnie Mathias Good and morning. Kenneth Day from the Amalgamated Transit Union. And we're talking mostly about VoteTransit.org, which is an effort to get more people to vote for uh, candidates that support mass transit. And it also represents a part of an overall program that I think is extremely exciting. There was a time... I'm old, and I, I can remember this, and most of you won't be able to remember this, but prior to 1995, the American labor movement was almost totally isolated. Uh, they, the unions did not work together, not even with each other, and they certainly didn't work with the public. Then that, w that was a, a long, dry period in American labor movement. Uh, the American labor movement reached a, a high around 1957, when they had 35% of the workforce organized, but, but they were a separate part of the workforce. And union members were often told by union leaders uh, not to pay much attention to anybody else because they don't make as much money as we do. Uh, union members were making so much more money and had so much better benefits than the rest of the world that they, they, got, they began to think of themselves as a different sort of worker. And uh, that was a fatal mistake that was made, in my opinion, by the American labor movement, and a, a mistake that began to be corrected in 1995. So now we have unions reaching out to communities, reaching out to each other, helping each other. They created an organization called Jobs with Justice expressly for the purpose of, uh, of bringing unions and other organizations and other unions together to work on problems that all working people have. So we find Today, the unions are reaching out, and the Amalgamated Transit Union has a particularly fine program of bringing together the members of the union who drive the buses and drive the trains and keep them running, do the maintenance and all that, and the people that ride on those trains and buses because they have very, very similar interests, don't they, Kenneth? Absolutely, absolutely. And, and, and you, your description of uh, the labor movement in the past is act, exactly right. Uh, now we have to reach out and we have to make the riding public and the general public as as a whole to understand what unions are and who we are. A uh, long time ago, uh, we got to look we got to look content and comfortable, and uh, we forgot who we are and how we got to where we were. So now reaching out to the public is very important. Re reaching out to just different organizations, unions has learned that we cannot. We cannot fight these battles alone. If, for example, what we've been talking about here today about public transit, we have, have, have to reach out to the riding public again and make them understand how important that we have congressional elected officials that support public transit. It uh, stimulates our economy. 
every one dollar invested in public transportation generates four dollars in the economic returns that is very important to our economy so uh, unions are not just just some greedy fat bosses that you hear that description uh, that's being touted by certain uh, candidates right now uh, we have an interest in uh, the people we serve so it's very very important that we reach out make make the public understand who we are and you're doing that and you're doing that and you're doing it a very effective job and I'm very very proud of the amalgamated transit union 1338 because you you not only uh, you've not only done your job which is to drive the buses and and keep them running and the trains but you've also expanded too you've also uh, taken in some more some more workers have you not absolutely absolutely with the growth uh, growth and expansion of the the rail system uh, it also creates jobs that put that put uh, people to work take them off the unemployment rolls so those are the types of things by investing and voting for candidates that support transit would do for us you know sometimes I say and just to shock people I say we don't really want jobs what I say is what we really want is salaries what we really want is decent treatment you know what we want is dignity in the workplace and that sort of thing so so you're not only helping people get jobs by mass transit, but you're also making sure that they're good jobs. We want them to have we want them to have good jobs. We want them to have a decent health care plan and mm -hmm. be able to pay their bills and do some of the things that uh, uh, you want to do in life that kind of keeps you happy. Oh, you yeah. mean like a middle class family? Absolutely. Wow, what a novel <laughs> concept, man. <laughs> I know, isn't it? It, it, it? We don't ask for much. And, and I look at some of these major corporations. Walmart is a wonderful wow. example of this. Uh, largest employer in the, in the world. In the world. One of the richest corporations in the world. But yet their employees are on public systems. Wow. I was, listen, I was looking at a documentary <laughs> the other night uh, on Walmart. What they was talking about when the employees are getting hired on at Walmart, they take them in the back and give them a whole list of uh, government programs where they yep. can go and get assistance. Food stamps. Because they say, we're not going to pay you. Uh, <laughs> we're not going to pay you, so you, you have to uh, get the government to do it. And they don't give you a discount on, on groceries well, they when don't. you work there. Walmart no. employees don't get a discount don't at Walmart? Discount. No, sir. Not I on groceries. No not on groceries. I see. They can get it on stuff, uh -huh. but not on groceries. So they can't get a discount on their own groceries? Yeah. That is amazing. I was talking a while ago about the change that occurred in 1995, and it just it's just coincidental that, it, that the anniversary was this week. Uh, on October 25th of 1995, John Sweeney was elected president wow. of the AF of LCIO, and that was the first time in 100 years that the leadership of the AF of LCIO had not picked the new leadership. Wow. So, wow. so that was the first overthrow. It wasn't really... Uh, you know, like coming up from down and down the very, very basement, but it was uh, an overthrow of the AF of LCIO leadership. And John Sweeney of the service employees was elected president, and uh, and uh, uh, and Trumpka, Richard Trumpka, at that time was uh, vice president, and now he's the president of the AF of LCIO, and they're very, very vigorous and very uh, working very hard, not just on politics but also on bringing people together so that all workers uh, be, will be together on the same program. Most people don't realize how important the unions are because they're the only leadership that we have among the workers. The, uh, an individual worker can't do that much. As, it, as the saying goes, uh, the, the, the boss don't listen when a worker squawks, but they have to listen when the union talks. That's right. That's, that's right. Oh, I like that. Mm -hmm. And, That's good. And, and, and local uh, unions are also always described as a voice for the voiceless. And that's the reason why you've seen the, strate the strategic effort all throughout the country to uh, kill off unions. We're the voice for the voiceless. Yeah. Getting rid of the unions is part of the, uh, the overall drive to lower everybody's wages. And it's working. Absolutely. Uh, it's working. Unions have been, uh, have been chopped and sliced and diced and uh, confined and put into rigorous uh, restrictions and uh, and there's a whole lot more of that going on and at the same time uh, the American standard of living has fallen we're now 13th or 14th we're no longer the leaders of the world in our standard of living our education systems no longer the leader of the world uh, all of our 
everything that you can go by as to our our standard of living has is deteriorating, and uh, of course, in order to do that. They have to take care of the unions. They have to get rid of the unions. They have to to pull the rug out from under working people. And uh, they've been pretty effective at it. So corporations are riding high, and uh, and the rest of us have been just fighting a defensive battle for some time. But that don't mean we're beat. Yeah, we we've uh, we've contributed to that. We've shot ourselves in the foot by we've uh, had uh, the. Uh, decent lives, decent salaries, and decent benefits. And we, uh, some of our own members, they forgot how they got what they have. <laughs> yeah, there's a, we get those complaints all the time that union members don't know which side they're on. Uh, the, there's a one of the pictures going around on the internet right now is a, a picture of a man shooting himself in the foot. He's got a big 45 caliber uh, pistol, you know, pointed right at his own foot. Wow. And it says union members who vote uh, against the working class <laughs> candidates, you know, are shooting themselves in the foot. That's funny. I had to put that on my Facebook page, too, because I, I, oh, I really great. liked it. I love it. We have a caller yes. named George. Can we put him on now? Good morning, George. Thanks for calling KNON. Yes, uh, my name is George. Um, I had a comment in regards to uh, pay rate and what uh, the politicians call good jobs. <laughs> yes, know, it's sir. Funny how, how funny how they say they're bringing jobs to North Texas, but they never say the pay rate amount. They uh, don't, do they? They never do. They say, "Well, we're bringing hundreds of jobs." Well, how much uh -huh. are these jobs paying? Minimum yeah. wage. Did you yeah, see the wage. George? Did you see the headlines that says American Airlines is hiring? Yeah, yeah. Twenty five hundred pounds. Because they've been they've been laying off people all this time, you know, and they've been complaining about uh, yeah. about terrible working conditions and all that, and they're going through the bankruptcy. Why do you think they're hiring now? <laughs> what, how do you figure it? Well, it's because they got the wages down. Right. They're hiring at low wages. The communication right. workers, communication workers of America says, let me see, I've got a note on that somewhere. So the Communication Workers of America says that we are alerting passengers at 15 airports across the country that American Airlines is replacing experienced, trained employees with minimum wage workers. That's why they're hiring now after a year or two of telling us how they can't afford to, to pay people. Uh, I got they're getting I, them cheap. I got yeah, I got another example. I worked for General Motors uh, for 15 years. Uh -huh. I took a buyout in 91. I moved to North Texas here 17 years ago. My son just came back from my, uh, uh, Afghanistan. He did four years with the Marine Corps. Uh, General Motors is going to hire because they're going to open up a new section of General Motors in Arlington. Right. That's what the pay rate is going to start at. What is it? $14 an hour. $14 an hour, 40 times 40 hours a week. Uh -huh. Don't add up to, to very much after mm -hmm. taxes. Right. After taxes. It's like yeah, I think it only came out to like four fifty. I can make a living on four fifty a week. And they'll be replacing workers there that that were making a decent and, living. Yeah. And the workers around them are still making thirty dollars an hour. Mm -hmm. So, but I but mean, the companies the companies working on that too. They're trying to oh, get yeah. get people out. That's how that's how come they offered you a buyout. How much were you making when you when you got the buyout? At the time, I was making uh, seventeen something an hour. Yeah, but that was in nineteen ninety one. Right. The average okay. wage at that time was probably eight. Right. Yeah. The uh -huh. thing is, too, the, the cars, okay, if they're reducing the pay rate for the employee, employees, the car prices have not gone down with it. If That's it right. Going up. <laughs> Guess where That's that gone. extra money's going? I, I don't understand the justification for that. They don't have to, you know. That's that's. They don't have to have a justification to put more money in their pocket. Well, justice exactly. justification comes from from the root word justice, you know. So <laughs> so you ain't gonna understand anything if you're looking for justice, you, but oh. you understand it very easily when you understand that corporations are just about taking all the money that they can possibly get, no matter what, no from matter anybody what. they can take it from, no matter what. No matter what. By all no by any means necessary. The, the, we think Malcolm X invented that, but they didn't. He didn't. It was the corporations invented the, by any means necessary. Yeah, and it's just so sad for the uh, the kids that are growing up today because I'm I'm 56, getting ready to retire. I mean, there's nothing left for these kids. What are they gonna? My son came back. He's doing an armored car uh, security job, which pays him ten dollars an hour. Jesus. Uh, on top of that, if he goes over forty hours. 
He doesn't get time and a half because it's in their policy. It's in their policy not to pay time and a half after 40 hours. And I said, wait a minute, there's a law for that. And he yeah. goes, not if it's in the policy when you when you first hired on. That's I right. Said, Texas, workforce. Texas workforce yeah. would, would be interested in hearing about this. Yeah. Uh, Texas Workforce Commission, uh, which you can Google and uh, mm-hmm. call them. And also there's a group here in town called the Workers Defense Project that is very, very good on, uh, on the Texas payday law. The Texas payday law, I understand, is quite simple, and it works. Yeah. So, so he, can, might get, he might be able to burn somebody on that. I, well, we, we looked it up and, and, uh, on, on some of the uh, websites, and, uh, yeah, it, it, if it's in the policy and you hired on accepting that, I don't. I don't know if that's. Uh, I don't know if that's true or not. I really think that you should uh, just just for grins call the Texas Workforce Commission okay. and, and talk to them. I mean, they're more than happy to answer questions. I know okay. what they're doing. They're calling. They're misclassifying him. They're calling oh, him a, a contractor, a, a contract worker instead of uh, an, an employee. And the uh, Department of Labor is after that yep. because this yeah. misclassification business has been going on for some time. The IRS okay. is after that, too. Under the Bush administration, they got away with it because the Justice Department didn't do anything. But the Department mm-hmm. of Labor now is after them yep. for yep. misclassifying workers. And uh, I think you will find, if you call the Texas Workforce Commission, and uh, I think you will find that, that they have to pay uh, overtime for more That's than right. 40 hours right. if they're right. employees. That's- in I America, mean, in, in America, and 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 see, I know because I was in the union. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Well, let's and ask a union president, Kenneth Day, sitting right here. Can people work employees more than forty hours without paying them time and a half? No, I, I, I it's my understanding of the law that you have to pay overtime after forty hours. You check mm-hmm. the uh, FLSA, the Fair Labor Standards Act, as well. I think it's clear. That's the Fair Labor Standards Act uh, that makes it happen, but the Texas Payday Law enforces it. And they're very good. I used to have that number for the Texas Payday okay. Law. But anyway, you can get it online. Okay, uh, Texas Payday Law. Is that yes, what sir. It's yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. But even at that, you're right. The guy, go, guy goes to Afghanistan, serves four years, and then comes back and can't get nothing but, uh, a, $14 a, an hour but a guarding hour. job, uh, 10 bucks an hour, and, uh, and then they refuse to pay him overtime when he works more than 40 hours. Deserves better. Yep, exactly. definitely deserves better. That says something really bad about our country. Fight them. Well, Fight them. That's not, not just not my kid. It's the future that's of That's right. Kids. That's right. exactly right. The future right. of an American, American kid. That's mm-hmm. exactly right. They're all coming back, and they're coming back to what? Yep. Be sure and join the Texas Alliance for Retired Americans as soon as you get retired. I'm the president of that, and I love to sign up new retirees because uh, we're going to fight together. We'll take a break right now, and we'll be right back. Well, thank you very much. Worker who's leaning on a bended knee. Soil and tattered in search of relief. Fighting for some unspoken bill. This is Jim Rowe of Monday's Cajun Zydeco Music Party. Come join me this Saturday, October 27th, for the second annual KNON Zydeco Halloween Fay Voodoo Party, starring the fabulous Rosie Ledette for one night only. That's right, Rosie Ledette is coming back with a new CD this Saturday, October 27th. Opening the show will be JV and the Zydeco Posse. Doors will be at 7. The Alligator Cafe will be serving up a deliciously devilish dinner including Cajun pasta orleans, shrimp etouffee, red beans and rice, and bread pudding for dessert. And of course there will be a costume contest for the scariest, funniest, and most Mardi Gras costumes. Just added, Zydeco Dance Lessons before JB and the Zydeco Posse by Cowboy. Tickets are available now at knon.org for every young records and Bill's records in Dallas. That's the second annual Zydeco Halloween Fay Voodoo starring Rosie Ledette and JB and the Zydeco Posse this Saturday, October 27th at Poor David's Pub located at 1313 South Lamar in Dallas for a night of frighteningly fantastic fun. Tune in every Saturday morning for KNON Speak Up Saturdays. Speak Up Saturday starts at 7 a.m. with an expanded church information and forum hosted by Reverend Marion Barnett, a news and politics show for you. Then at 9 a.m., it's the Workers' Bee hosted by Gene Lance, sponsored by the CWA, a show for workers' rights. At 10 a.m., the Dallas Observer presents Jim Shoots. 
Get off my lawn with the other side of the news. Wrapping up Speak Up Saturdays at 11 a.m. is Lambda Weekly with David Tappet, the longest-running LGBTQ talk show in the country. Be sure to tune in every Saturday morning to Speak Up Saturdays right here on KNON 89.3 FM, the voice of the people. Recycle Revolution is a local recycling collection service and community drop-off center. They collect and accept all traditional recyclables, including paper, plastic, aluminum, cardboard, and glass, as well as materials like TVs, computers, lamps, light bulbs, batteries, ballasts, and styrofoam. They offer collection services to apartments, condos, and businesses. They also offer a community drop-off located at 1703 Chestnut Street in Dallas. For more information, 214-566-3025 or RecycleRevolutionDallas.com. Darklings, it's me, the diva of the dead of the Necrotones, here to tell you that Blue Lisa is celebrating the 13th anniversary of her show, Big Texas Blues, with a Halloween spectacular starring the Necrotones in our first reunion show, in almost a decade on All Hallows' Eve, Wednesday, October 31st. The swing and ghoul jazz and stage show of the Necrotones has always been frighteningly good fun, and we've decided to bring it back from the grave for one night only as per request of Blue Lisa herself. She has such fantastic taste. Also appearing on the bill will be Howling K. Smith at 9 p.m., channeling the music and spirit of Screaming Jay Hawkins. There'll be a costume contest for scariest, most cocktail, and funniest costumes, so start planning now. The place for the musical haunting is LaGrange, located at 2704 Elm Street in Deep Hellum. The doors are at 8 p.m., with Count Rockula providing spooky visuals and music to die for. Tickets are available now at KNON.org, Bills Records and Good Records in Dallas, and Forever Young Records in Grand Prairie. That's Blue Lisa's lucky 13th anniversary extravaganza, starring the Necrotones with special spooky guest Howling K. Smith on Halloween night, Wednesday, October 31st. It's going to be a scream. <laughs> We're back on the working speed, 972-647-1893. I'm here with Bonnie Mathias and Kenneth Day of the Amalgamated Transit Union. I am so sorry I left one of, one of our Marys hanging a while ago. we got another Mary waiting, but Joe was first. Good morning, Joe. Thanks for can, calling KNON. Hey, Ken. How you doing? Glad to hear from you, brother. Hey, same here, same here. Yeah, I've been with you guys for a long time. I've been way back to the old uh, 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 Acorn days. Uh-huh. Oh, uh, <laughs> Yeah, you guys got you guys got a lot of bad press out there. That was uh, uh, unfortunate. It was a bunch of lies, but uh, we know the name of that tune. And you remember <laughs> Bonnie Mathias then? Uh, Bonnie Mathias, fine young lady. Mm-hmm. Matter of fact, I like to take you to my family picnic. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, 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 kid, do my mama proud. Do my mama proud. Thank you, my Bonnie friend. Here. Thank you. Hey, Bonnie, I ain't scared of you. I ain't scared of you, Bonnie. I ain't scared of you. You know that. And what, girl? It's hallelujah, hallelujah. Hey, Ken, look. Ah. Uh, on a uh, two things I like to touch on. There's a lot of misconception out here, and some of it helped me a little bit. The minimum wage, if you could give that again today, the minimum wage, and also expound a little on that right to work uh, uh, law or rule here in Texas. I have a lot of confusion on that. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank so you. Joe, Thanks, Joe, Joe wants Kenneth to talk about the right to work law. Well, the right to work law is in, in, in the state of Texas. Uh, for public employees, well, actually, the state of Texas, period, you have a right to uh, join a union, not join a union. Um, that is something that's being uh, trying to be forced upon all public employees and all, all. Uh, yeah, one of the one unions. of the presidential candidates has a, a program to make right to work all over the United States. That's that's correct, and that's, bring down wages everywhere. That's yep. correct. That's correct. Mm-hmm. But that is that's a state law, and that's something we would like to see change. But I can tell you, it's very, very difficult right now to have that done. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the right to work was invented in Texas, and, and it was named <laughs> right here in Dallas by the Dallas Morning News. Yeah, and it's probably it's mostly across the southern states where you find the right to work laws. Mm-hmm. And, and it sounds like it's a really good thing, right? Right to work. Right to work. Now, yeah. and what it, it should be right to work for less. Right. But if you if you made a list of the right to work states. <laughs> And then you made another list of who's got the lowest wages and the worst benefits, the worst, uh, the worst standard of living. It yeah. would be the exact same states. That's right. right. Because it's only organized working people is the only thing that pulls up uh, wages and benefits and standard of living. For Corporations everybody. always try to push it down. 
So you can give it to the corporations or you can give it to the organized working people. And uh, if, you get, if, if organized working people have a say-so, we're going to have better wages. We're going to have better livelihoods and all that. You know, the Dallas Morning News ran an article. Oh, I better not get off on that because we got Mary waiting to yes. talk, and I don't want her to have to wait. Thanks for calling KNO in, Mary. There Hello. she's. There you are. Go right ahead, here. sister. Nope. Mary I thought up. I heard her. That was you, Bonnie. I guess it was me. <laughs> sorry. Mary, call again. I'm sorry. Uh, if you, if you have, sometimes people have to wait and they get cut off. Or they're on cell phones and they're driving along in their cars, you know, and they go under a bridge or something, and we lose them. Yeah. The Morning News on Wednesday ran a bold article describing the great problems in the world economy. And according to them, what, what's wrong with the world economy, what's driving everything down, is automation and outsourcing. In other words, uh, automation is taking our jobs because machines are taking them, and outsourcing is taking our jobs because our jobs are being shipped overseas, both eating away the best jobs. But the roar of the article ended with a whimper when it came to solutions because they didn't have any. <laughs> there was no solutions in the Dallas Morning News article. But the solutions are very, very simple. The answer to outsourcing is to make every trading partner, including the United United States stick to the International Labor Organization standards for how workers are supposed to be treated. Right. There are standards that are published. You can get them online. The International Labor Organization has these standards. The United States does not live up to them, and neither do any of their trading partners. So all you got to do is that, and then you won't have a problem with outsourcing anymore. We'll no longer have that race to the bottom. The answer to automation is the same one we've reached over and over again, which is to lower the working hours. Uh, when, the, when the railroad, when the steam engine was invented and locomotives were invented and, and uh, uh, cars were invented and all that, they lowered the working hours. Right. See, we used to work 14 hours a day. Mm -hmm. Then they lowered it to 12, and they lowered it to 10, and finally got it lowered to 8, and then that's where we got stuck. Ever since 1935, we've had the uh, we've had the uh, uh, lowered the working the the working day has been eight hours and uh, and and yet productivity has gone up like crazy. I can show you figures that show that since World War II, that you are now producing four times as much per hour as what you used to be producing. And and isn't that fun? The end of that because automation. Called. Joe, but you're still working the same hours. That's it. Right. And you know, Joe called about minimum wage too. Uh, the minimum wage right now is seven dollars and twenty-five cents an hour. Mm -hmm. That's only if you don't get any tips. Yeah, that's okay. poverty. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, if you absolutely. get tips and it's lower, it's even lower. Yeah, it's way lower. I mean, it can go down to I think as little as three dollars an hour, maybe three fifteen. Mm -hmm. No, I think is it three fifteen? I thought it was two something. Three. Oh, they raised all the way up to three fifteen. Okay, so well. your waiters and your waitresses and and your bartenders and stuff and folks like that, they're making three dollars and fifteen cents an hour to wait on you. Can you imagine it? Ag agriculture workers a too are also oh. exempt from the minimum wage. See, that's so those those little oh. children, when you buy, drive by those fields and see those little Mexican kids out there picking tomatoes or something, they are not making the minimum wage. The minimum wage law never covered them. Agribusiness was too that's important. Right. Uh, the, the agricultural corporations have been able to work people for less than the minimum wage all this time and, of course, in food service. I think we need another Caesar check. And the, and the, and the Walmart... <laughs> The Walmart model oh. is being applied everywhere so that people cannot get 40 hours a week. So that every worker is some kind of part-time casual worker. Yep. I used to be a casual worker for a Missouri Pacific Railroad. Wow. And uh, we worked on a, on a freight dock. We were loading trucks. And they were very, very careful. We never made 40 hours. Yeah. What they call us casuals. And uh, if we got, if we got really, really good and stayed with it, and maybe if knew somebody, we could get in the Teamsters Union and have a decent job. But the, the Teamsters had all of the decent jobs. They drove all the forklifts <laughs> and uh, did all the directing and everything like that. And the rest of us were just doing uh, uh, the lowest forms of labor, just pulling these carts back and forth and loading these boxes. And and that would, they considered us casual labor. Well, now they're trying to make everybody casual, casual labor. labor. <laughs> so you don't have any rights. That's what we call the Walmart model. And uh, you have to fight that at, with, at every turn. One way you can fight that is to join in with the Walmart people that are organizing Walmart. In fact, this is the best way I know of. 
What they're trying to get people to do right now is adopt a Walmart store. So get your organization together to adopt a Walmart store and say, this is going to be our store, and we're going to be talking to the employees over there about helping with the union. They are planning, and this is not a, not a secret. I'm not telling, no, not telling out anybody's secrets. There's going to be a strike on Black Friday. Woo-hoo! The day after Thanksgiving, the most important, uh, the most important shopping day in America, November 23rd. Yep. There will be a strike at every Walmart store where anybody, any, where they have, where anybody has the courage right. to take a day off and not work on November the 23rd. They will be doing that. I've got a telephone number if you need more information to about helping with the Walmart because this is a very big deal. Yes, it Kevin is. Kevin Blair is the local organizer, and here comes his telephone number. You got your pencil, eight five nine, three two two. 8196. I'll say it again. Kevin Blair's phone number is 859 322 8196. And, and that's, here's that's his, from he's out of Tennessee, so don't anybody freak out. That's just that's his area code. <laughs> well that yeah, his area code on his cell phone. Yes, so it's yes. not a long it's not a long no. distance call. Eight five nine three two two eight one nine six. And you can uh, email him at kblair. K is just the letter K, B L A I R, at ufcw.org, ufcw.org. So Kevin Blair will help you to adopt your Walmart store. That's great. And then, you know, like when there's going to be a picket at your store or something like that, you, you just pitch in and help. It don't mean that you're, you're uh, going to have to donate a million dollars or something like that. It just means that uh, you kind of kind of keep track of what's going on in that store and, and help them, especially help them get through this strike because, uh, you know, they had a little mini strike. Yes. And I yes. went there, and we, we played some of that on KNON. That was fun. Yeah, I was right behind you, Bonnie. In fact, <laughs> no, I put great. you in my movie. <laughs> I saw that. I put a movie on YouTube uh, starring Bonnie Mathias. Uh, I'd have starred myself, but I couldn't take my I own know, picture. I you can't take your own picture. We, yeah. need, to, we need another cameraman. Dude, so it's so your, you your picture and my voice. <laughs> It's awesome, folks. Uh, these these folks in, at Walmart are excited. Uh, some of them are scared. Mm-hmm. But you know what? There was a seven-page memo that came out after that last little strike. Went out to uh, Walmart managers. They cannot suspend you, retaliate you in any way. If you struck that day or any other day, you can come back to work like nothing happened. That's what Walmart wow. says. They yeah. say that, that they will not uh, try to penalize people that did Patricia. this. Uh, Patricia's on the line. We're going to have to hurry, though. Patricia, good morning. Thanks for calling K and Win. Hi, how you doing this morning? Glad to hear from you. Hi, um, I was just want to ask the question regarding the ba- the uh, propositions that are on the ballot. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not understanding what they're for. There's like three propositions. They They're, want more money. Every one of them is to sell bonds, isn't it? Yep. The, the city of Dallas wants to sell bonds to raise money, that the amount of money that's in each one of those proposals, to do what those proposals say. Mm-hmm. Now, I just, I got to tell you, bond programs are tough because we may vote this money in during this election cycle, but we may not see the fruits of that money for five years. And, and another thing, too, about those bond proposals, they always put some some little flavoring in there, and, yeah. they, and they advertise the heck out of that. Yeah. You know, they can say, we're gonna, like the sailboats, you know, they're always going to have little sailboats in the Trinity. And I don't know how many bond, how many, how many billions of dollars they raised saying that we're going to have sailboats in the Trinity. And that picture, still grosses me out. Sailboats. <laughs> but, but uh, you know, you have to actually read the thing as to what, uh, you have to read the proposal. And uh, that's and another good reason for voting early because, because you, you need to take time to read that. Right. And you don't, when you step in there to pull the trigger, you know, you only got five minutes. Right. Uh, that's not, a, not enough time to really evaluate that. My own opinion, if you don't mind me throwing my opinion, is yeah, that, that's what I need. Mean. That, uh, that if they, if they want to build something, do something, why can't they just spend tax money on it? Why do they have to go through the bond procedure? Mm-hmm. Because, because that means that somebody's going to buy those bonds and somebody is going to make all the interest from those bonds. Well, it ain't going to be you and me. No. It's going to be the banks. That's right. So, okay. so I'm a little bit prejudiced against bond proposals, but it kind of, it depends on what they want to spend the money on. And you have to really look at it. We've well, got to give Kenneth Day some more chance to talk. Okay. He, he drove in. And uh, or didn't drive any, d- took public transportation. <laughs> and and uh, Kenneth Day is the head of Amalgamated Transit Union, 1338. Go ahead with your message, Kenneth. What what do you want people to do this election? 
we want people this election again get out and support candidates that's uh, supporting uh, mass transit. Mass transit again to our region is very very important. Vote mass transit. It easing traffic congestion on our roads, reducing gas consumption, and bringing uh, generate revenues for our, our economy. Yeah, keep the roads safer. Keeping the roads safer. Don't have to worry about having a wreck. Yes. Uh, improve the air quality. Absolutely. Because uh, air quality is a pretty big issue today. Air quality. They're not talking about it in the presidential race, but we about to suffocate. That's right. Air quality is very, very important. And uh, the jobs that are creating, we, we consider them to be green jobs. That's right. Mm -hmm. And it stimulates the economy. Yes. Every dollar invested in public transportation generates $4 in economic returns. Yes. And the more we use public transit, the better it's going to get. Mm -hmm. Better it's going to get. It's make our roads safer. Again, if you look, uh, go to votetransit.org and you can uh, find more information. All right, that's Kenneth Day from Amer Amalgamated Transit Union 1338. Bonnie Mathias, what, what else you got to say? Uh, don't forget about the uh, phone banking tomorrow from 2 to 4 at uh, that's sponsored by Move On. It's going to be at the Union Hall. At be your Union Hall. My Union Hall. I will be there, 1408 North Washington. Please come down there. Bring your cell phone because that's how we're going to call. I do believe we're going to be calling into some swing states uh, to get our brothers and sisters to get out and vote. Gosh, it's so important. I just can't even tell you. Polls are open today. Polls are open tomorrow. I know a lot of the big churches are going to have uh, 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 buses going to the polls tomorrow. Uh, that's awesome. We all need to remember it is our right. People died uh, for the right for us to vote. Uh, people spent time in jail. Women uh, during women's suffrage, during the Freedom Riders. It's all about the right to vote. This is Gene Lynch. You might have seen me on television last Monday because we were out, we were out uh, rallying for the right to vote. Bonnie, tell us about the sign that you had. I had, uh, I, who did you I had have? My, you had Michael Swerner. That's right. I had Michael <clears throat> Swerner. He was uh, a young man in, that uh, went to the South, went to Mississippi to register Was registering voters. voters. And he was killed. In 1963. And he was a, a, young, a young white man. Cheney, Swerner, was, Goodman were all killed. Yep. Viola Luzzi was, all, was killed. These were people trying to help people vote in, in Mississippi and in the South in Alabama. And they got, they got murdered for the right to vote. Yep. So that's a pretty good argument why we ought to be voting today. Yes, yes, it is. But at least that's what very, I think. Very important. You know, one of the one of the posters that we had, in fact, the one that made the Dallas Morning News, uh, had a photo of, of a, a black man with scars, uh, whipping scars uh, all slave. over his he back, was a slave, a slave. Mm -hmm. and it said, "I vote because he couldn't." I vote because he could not. That's that's pretty powerful stuff. Mm -hmm. Sure is. We're yeah. about to get uh, out of time here. Oh, we're getting we're, axed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, let's remember. I wanted to talk drive. about the lame duck, duck Congress, but Ooh. we'll have to get to that next week. Ducks. Uh, yeah. Is yeah. duck season open? Lame Duck Congress <laughs> next week is going to be, we're going to talk about that next week because there's a lot of slashing going to go on if oh, we yeah. don't do something. That's right. We work, we appreciate so much the fact that KNON lets us come on and talk with Kenneth Day and people from the union movement and from the, from the workers' rights movement and workers' justice movement like Bonnie Mathias. And we appreciate so much that you listen. We'll be back next week. Yes. You're listening to KNON 89.3 FM in Dallas, the voice of of the people voted best radio station for music two years in a row by the Dallas Observer. Did you know that KNON podcasts all of its local talk shows? KNON has local talk each show covering your community in its own unique way. So if you missed one of our great morning talk shows, you can go back and listen to it online. We keep the shows for two months so you can hear everything you have been missing out on. Visit KNON.org for more information about the KNON Morning Talk Shows podcast. Also available on iTunes.